The earliest tools for roasting coffee beans were pans you would hold over hot coals or an open fire. But today, coffee roasting is a far more sophisticated process. Using large, often fully automated machines with built-in gas burners that heat air to roast the beans. This coffee roaster is both programmable and manually adjustable by touch panel. The Roastmaster can tailor the temperature and roasting time to influence flavor, acidity, and other characteristics of coffee. To shape the roast chamber, workers feed a sheet of stainless steel through a sheet metal roll. The roast chamber is the drum in which the beans roast by convection heat. The next step is to weld the rolled sheet into a cylinder. Then workers grind and polish the welds until they're flat, smooth, and shiny. Another worker makes the cooling tray in a similar way, but with a support band welded to the top. The cooling tray is the drum into which the hot beans drop when they exit the roast chamber. Stirring arms circulate the beans as a fan draws air through the tray to cool the hot beans. Certain parts of the roaster are cut from a stainless steel sheet. Stainless steel is the ideal material, not only because it's stylish, but also because it's durable and corrosion resistant. This computer-guided laser cutter is slicing out a safety component called the heat shield, which prevents the roast master from accidentally touching a hot surface. The heat shield, like many other parts, cut from stainless steel sheets, has to be formed to a very precise shape. A worker bends angles and curves into the metal with a press brake. Another component, the trier, lets you draw a sample of beans during roasting. A craftsman constructs the trier by welding various smaller parts to a piece of stainless steel tube, then meticulously grinding and polishing the welds until they're smooth. This high-pressure water jet cutter also cuts parts from stainless steel sheets. This component is one of six flights, which is part of the paddle that lifts and mixes the beans inside the roast chamber so that they roast evenly. To form the flights to the required shape, a worker curves them one at a time in a press. Next, the welder places all the paddle components into a specialized fixture which positions them correctly. First, he aligns the spokes to the paddle shaft. Then he welds the parts in place. He positions the flights, clamps them securely, and welds them on. The combination of inner and outer flights lifts the beans into the airflow, ensuring the beans roast evenly. A custom-designed grinding machine hones the flights to produce a small clearance of around a tenth of an inch between the edge of the paddle and the wall of the roast chamber. This design ensures the paddle is wide enough to pick up every last coffee bean without touching the wall while rotating. Once they install the paddle, a worker closes up the roast chamber with a faceplate. Alignment pins ensure the faceplate is properly positioned. The paddle shaft protrudes through a bearing in the faceplate. The assembly team uses a hoist to lift the heavy chamber and position it on top of the coffee roaster stainless steel support frame. They install the heat shield that was cut by the laser cutter and bent to shape in the press brake. On top, the assembly team mounts the machine's funnel-shaped hopper. The hopper feeds the unroasted coffee beans to the roast chamber below. The hopper's lid has a tube which connects to a vacuum system that draws the coffee beans up through a plastic hose. On the front of the roasting chamber, an assembler hangs a hinged discharge door that has a viewing window. He plugs in a sensor that measures the temperature of the beans in the roasting chamber and sends that information to the machine's computer. This coffee roasting machine has three additional temperature sensors that send data to the computer. 
These sensors measure the temperature of the air entering and exiting the roast chamber and the temperature of the clean air exhausting from the machine after the burner incinerates the smoke generated by the roasting process. Workers continue assembly by installing the cooling tray beneath the discharge door of the roasting chamber. The cooling tray sits on a support frame which contains a motor that turns the stirring arms inside the tray. At the back of the machine, a worker installs the tray's cooling fan and the motor that drives it. This gauge measures the pressure of the air that mixes with the gas going into the machine's burner. Next, they install the circulation fan. The fan is designed to withstand high heat and move air efficiently throughout the coffee roaster. The bottom end of this stainless steel tube connects to a vacuum motor. The top end connects to the tube protruding from the feed hopper's lid. To fill the roasting chamber, the vacuum motor sucks the raw green coffee beans up into the hopper, which drops the beans into the chamber, where as they roast, their papery skin called the chaff breaks off. This separating device, known as a cyclone, connects to the circulation fan. The fan blows hot air returning from the roasting chamber into this cyclone at high velocity. The air circulates in a downward spiral past the burner at the base of the cyclone, incinerating the smoke. This also draws the chaff out of the air into a barrel. Nozzles spray water on the chaff to prevent it from catching fire, which is a common hazard with traditional coffee roasters. The circulation fan then forces the clean hot air up and out the top of the cyclone through this S-shaped insulated air duct back into the roasting chamber. A technician in the factory's electrical department assembles the machine's control panel. Among other components, the circuitry runs control systems and the machine's six electric motors which operate moving parts, such as the bean drawing vacuum motor, the circulation fan, the cooling tray fan, the roasting chamber paddle, and cooling tray stirring arms. Workers then install the control panel in a cabinet on the side of the machine. They connect all the wires. They mount the machine's computer adjacent to the control panel cabinet. Next, a worker assembles the cooling tray system. A motor under the tray drives the stirring arms. The hot roasted coffee beans sit on top of the stainless steel screen. The cooling fan pulls ambient air through the beans, down through the openings of the screen, then out an exhaust pipe to the outdoors. The stirring arms move the beans around so that they cool quickly and evenly, which prevents the beans from continuing to roast. The factory runs every finished coffee roaster through multiple test roasts. After heating the roast chamber to a specific temperature, the operator uses the touch screen to release the beans into the chamber. The hot air travels from the cyclone to the roast chamber, then through a return pipe back to the cyclone, where it's cleaned and sent back to the chamber. To know when to manually end the roast cycle, the operator views, smells, and listens to the beans. That's because coffee beans make crackling noises as they expand and shed their chaff. The machine can also be set to end the roast cycle automatically when the beans reach their target temperature. A trapdoor opens to draw in ambient air. This cooler air pushes smoke in the roasting chamber up to the cyclone for incineration. The computer can automatically open the roast chamber's discharge door, or the operator can do so manually. As soon as the roasted coffee beans drop into the cooling tray, the stirring arms and cooling fan automatically start up. If the beans are perfectly roasted, the machine is ready to be shipped to a coffee roasting business.